Okay, so again, open up browser, Google Maps, and open street map. In Google Maps, in the uh, search criteria, type in Snowetta Viewpoint. That'll take you to our site. Okay, and so what we're going to do is, is show you how to kind of locate a site, locate an image, take this image and bring it into uh, Rhino, use it as a basis to draw, create maps and create diagrams. And uh, also, then we're gonna, going to use uh, OpenStreetMap because it has a nice feature uh, in the layers called Cycle Map, which will give the topography, uh, which is really quite nice. So uh, that way, this gives you uh, some contour lines that you can then take a screen capture or an image and then be able to uh, uh, use that as a basis to start to create your own uh, site models and also your own uh, diagrams. So if we look at the viewpoint, you're going to be zoomed in uh, when you initially come in. If you know Google Maps, you can uh, switch over here between the map and uh, the satellite. The map is good to, I would take both uh, screen captures of both the, uh, the map and the, the uh, satellite image from uh, the same viewpoint, uh, just, just so that you have those for, as an option, because there's certain information that's a little bit easier to read such as the water bodies and things like that on the map and some trails that in a satellite view you don't necessarily see all of those so uh, it's usually good and then that way you have some options to overlay and if they're at the same viewpoint then you don't have to worry about alignment issues and things of that nature okay so if we zoom in here what's great is that we can get in and we can start to see the orientation and relationship to due north which is straight up and down um, we can see some trails and uh, some of the ways that people can get to, to the space. And if we zoom out, we can start to see the, the larger context of, of what's around it, where it's located geographically. So when you're telling the story and communicating uh, where your project is it's, uh, and about your project, having information for the, the client or the committee, the group that's uh, reviewing your work to understand where it's at in relationship to other geography, uh, that's really important. So here we can see that this is our uh, viewpoint. And then we see that Snowetta, which is a, a large mountain, is, uh, is here. So it's sometimes good to take different scales. So you can kind of Here's the large context, then we can kind of zoom in, and we might have a context here where we can start to come in a little bit closer and understand uh, its relationship to some of these other features. And uh, then we can really zoom in, and this is where, you know, where our site plans and things like that at this level would start to come in. So the idea of taking people from a global view and and that's not a bad thing, you know, just to come out and get all the way out in, in terms of, okay, here we are in Sweden, uh, or not Sweden, but Norway, and then, uh, and then zooming in, you know, so bringing people into these scales and so that they understand where you're talking about is really important. So if I, if I were you, I would be having a, a diagram, a site map, a location map that, that shows where it's located in relationship to the country, then I would be zooming in to show it in relationship to uh, the region and Snowetta, which are these major kind of points. And then, then you would be zoomed in really tight and close to, to understand uh, it at the site scale. Okay, So those would be kind of three scales. So one of the things that you'll notice, little tricks of the trade, is if you come up to the, uh, to the URL bar up at the top here, when you see at 
and you see this string of numbers, the first two strings, this is actually the latitude and longitude, and then this is the height data so uh, of where, the, where your camera, uh, uh, where it's located. So if we change the camera viewpoint, you can see that, that that last elevation data is showing you kind of where your camera viewpoint is from, okay? So what, what we can do there, because if we go in here at OpenStreetMap and type Snowetta viewpoint, we're not going to find it. It, doesn't, it do, doesn't show up. So what we can do, though, is take this data here, which is don't take the at, just take the two numbers and copy it take it over into OpenStreetMap and paste it and you see that uh, it gives us this option and there we are we can click on that and then we get we get our location so that's a a nice little feature okay so once we have that we can come over here to uh, some of some of the tools over on this side and one of these tools is the layer so you might have something that looks like that but we can uh, use the cycle map and then we can take out the terrain use this X up here to close but from here now we can we can zoom in we can zoom out and we can start to uh, to get maps that with topography so that we can start making large 3D site plans, and then also much more detailed 2D site plans. So the idea is that we just take this, and you can do a screen capture, um, or you can uh, do an export. Let's see, I think this one, this one is, go oh, this one's not going to do the PNG. That's going to do the XML. So what I would do is just do a screen capture, okay? You can capture the whole screen and then you can, uh, save it in there and then just bring it in. I'm just going to take a little snapshot of, of that screen, okay? So once we have that, I'm just going to take this one for now and then I'm going to cheat and I'm going to use my Mac version of Rhino so that but all of the same commands in that work in uh, in uh, for the Rhino or Windows version okay so I uh, will get into our top view here okay and then uh, what we want to do is is use a command called picture frame so you want to start typing in picture frame and you'll see that it pops up hit enter Okay, and then it's going to ask you to open up a uh, and choose the, the picture that you want to use. Okay, mine's on the desktop. Maybe that's not it. There we go. There it is. Select that open it up and then uh, it's going to ask you to put the first corner and then if you hold the shift key down it will get you to, to the ortho um, if you don't have uh, if you don't have the orthos turned on okay so now we have we have our image right in here now what's great about this is that it is uh, selectable as a component so you can go and edit it so we can scale it we can grab it and move it around uh, it really is quite nice so what I'm gonna do is to help myself just I'm gonna type move and then I want it to move it to the zero point okay So we've got it somewhat centered.
So now if we do our layering, what we can do is, is start to think about this and pop down here and say, okay, what well, we want this to be site image. And I'm going to change this color so I don't I don't ever like to use white. <coughs> Just going to choose an arbitrary color. And then I'm just going over here to Object Properties, but you can also just on the windows come down to the bottom where your layers are and select that new site layer. Okay, so now it's on that, that layer. And now I can lock that layer so that uh, I don't <coughs> accidentally uh, zoom around. Yes? Uh, I don't think any of us are able to find it on the screen map, but... Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so what I did is I went over to the viewpoint Snowetta on the Google Maps. If you go up to the URL bar, if you look for the at, and you just take those first two numbers, that's the latitude and longitude. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a number and then a comma, then a number and then another comma. So you just want those first two numbers. Yes? Yeah, can you Give me a moment because I actually did that and it put me close but not close enough. Okay. So so yeah, hold on just a minute. If you do this, command C, go over to OpenStreetMap, let's put it in. Okay, and then hit go. Then you then what you can do is you have these options, right? You see that option there? Click that, and that'll center that view onto your your page. Okay, so it doesn't give you a point; it just centers you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As soon as you move the mouse off, it it takes off of it. Okay. Everybody got that? Yeah, what your yours will look like. So if you if you come over here, right? Is this what you guys see? So TA people, let's uh, zoom around and raise your hand if you guys are having problems. Okay, so what you might see is just this. And then what you need to do is just click on the layers, which is right here, and do the cycle map, and then you get the topography. Close that there and that there, and you're pretty much good to go. Yeah, I want the cycle map, and I put the coordinates in, but it just Well, 
All right, so uh, what we found is that if you've been zooming around in Google Maps and uh, moving things around, you have to, once you get where you want, so like, like a view like this, and what you want to do here is refresh, so reload the screen, so that that re gives you a new set of coordinates that are tight, and then copy and paste those coordinates into the open street map. And then when you do that, then you will get the uh, then you will get the, the coordinates that you can select. Okay. And now you take the close these things out. Take a screenshot. But if you're on a Mac, it's Command Shift Four. If you're on a Windows, it should be Control Print Screen. And if you want the whole screen on a Mac, it's Command Shift 3. So then now, is everybody caught up? Picture frame? Yeah. So then when you go into Rhino, then you type picture frame. Now the reason, there's, there's another way to put images into the background in Rhino, which is called uh, is, is up here in your um, viewport properties, and you can actually put it as a background. But I don't like that as a background because you don't have any control over scaling or anything like that. So I would always recommend using Picture Frame as the tool because that way you can scale items and, and understand how that works. Right now, because we're doing diagrams, I'm not really caring about the scale. But when we get into modeling, we're going to be taking in reference images so that we can scale. So this is a preliminary situation. Okay, so once you guys have, have got that uh, put in, put it on a layer, lock that layer, then it's just a matter of, of tracing over those contour lines. And they don't have to be perfect, but I would, I would use as a curve interpolate points. And then just come over and start to and for now it doesn't have to be quick and dirty, but pretty soon you'll start to figure out okay where where you need to put a point to uh, get the right kind of curve that you want. And just start to create those uh, those uh, curves, and you'll notice that you have uh, these interval contour lines, so darker lines and lighter lines. Uh, those are actually kind of important. And what I would do is trace those. So let's let's do let's make a layer here called major contours. And then we'll make another layer called minor contours. And I'm going to select major contours as my current layer that I'm going to be building these things on. Then I'm going to select the things that I didn't put on. I want to make sure that those are on my major contour layer. And the reason we're going to put those on major and minor contour layers is that way when we import it into Illustrator, we'll be able to have our layer structure already set up. So all we have to do is select all of that and change uh, the way it looks. It makes it much easier to manage how this thing's going to look. So let's just do a few more. I'm not going to be really careful about it. And then I'll go over to my layers. Now that I've got the major ones, I'm going to select minor contours as my uh, current layer. And then again, 
interpolate point curve. And then I'm just going to come in here and Okay, so if you're using parallels, what you want to do is go to your home, go to computer, file computer, go to your home drive. Should be a networked drive. And then and then select it from there. It will be on your desktop. So if I can do that. Yeah, just None of the things have to be conceptually correct. All we're doing is creating lines at this point, okay? Did you find your image? Okay, hold on, Smith. So you can see that I'm just making a bunch of open lines. And then one other thing, you probably want to turn off Smart Track as you're doing these minor contour lines because it will want to start snapping on things. Oh, see, and that now here I have a problem. So when I have a problem like this where I need to go back and edit this curve, I select the curve and then go to uh, edit points which is this icon here, it's the same icon and you'll notice that uh, the points come on and what I can do here is just take I can go and select this individual point and then just move it using my gumball to get it exactly where I want it, hit escape I'm just going to do enough that we can have something to talk about here in Illustrator. Okay. All right. Okay, so now that I've got some curves and everything, I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to do a file export. Oops, I want to do file export selected. And I want to make sure that this is an Illustrator file and I'm just going to call this site test. Click export. Um, preserve model scale for now, that's fine. We just want to make sure that it's one to one because everything is, we're not to scale at this. We will we'll get into scale later, but right now we're not. Okay. I have to move forward. You guys can come back and watch the video that I'm recording. So I just need to keep moving because I have to leave here in just a few minutes. You'll get some time to. Uh, be able to do this at your own speed here shortly.
Okay, so what we want to do, let's see, what do I want? I want to print document. So if you have Windows 8, uh, the using the Windows key in the print screen seems to be the thing to do for Windows 8. I didn't know that, so that's something new we learned. Uh, again, I'm going to choose my orientation as uh, that. Okay, so now I'm going to file, open, and find that Illustrator file. Site test AI. Okay, so this is what we got. And you'll notice that I selected the, uh, the picture. The picture will not come in. It will only bring in its, uh, its selection. So uh, we can go into the layers and just turn off that sitemap. So the big thing that I want you to get out of here is that this is the reason why if you're good with the layers, if you're uh, careful with them. It makes editing these things really easy. So I can select over in the layers, I can select both of them by going over to this side. And now I can do some just really simple things like turn all of these to black. I can also change the strokes down to like 0.25. And then I can come back in and say, okay, well, I want the minor contours to maybe I want those dashed lines. So I can go over here, select them in layers, move over, and do a dashed. And we can start that. Well, that looks bad. So, <laughs> But maybe that won't look bad if I scale these things up. So again, I'll do Control-A or Command-A and select everything. It's kind of small. So maybe I want it a little bit bigger. Hold the, Hold the shift key to keep it in scale, and if you hold down the alt key, then, then it'll scale from the middle. Okay, that's still not quite the way we want it to look, so we just hit the minor contours. And then sometimes if you're doing this kind of line work, if you go to view, and then uh, hide edges, that'll take that away. So it's still selected, but we can see what we're doing now. And so here we can, we can adjust the gap. So what we want to do is have that gap a little bit smaller. So let's let's start at like three. Yeah, that starts to look good. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and again in the layers just select my major contours. Those can be fine and solid, but maybe I want them a little bit uh, thicker. Maybe not quite that thick. But there we go. So now it's starting to to pop up and we can understand and make a nice image. The other thing that I like to do is uh, when I'm doing contours is actually not to use black. So if we double click, select everything through the layer and then double click on our stroke color, we can come over here and 
maybe use like a dark gray. Oops, I didn't see. Okay. So that that becomes kind of handy if we want to do that. Now, if we had that satellite image, for instance, we could come back and uh, place a satellite image be behind this. And we can start to fade that using our opacity like I showed you in the previous video. And then you could start to overlay those contour lines on an image, on a satellite image. And now you could really start to build up. And if it's a dark satellite image, you could reverse this and actually use like white contour lines. And so then that would really make those things kind of start to pop. So this is really quickly how you can get and get a site and start to build a site a diagram very simply, very quickly, and still make it look uh, really good. So that's the, the kind of, wow, you can't really see that there, can you? There you go. I will use black on mine just so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. There, now you can see how that, that pops out. So again, you, when you're doing contours, you can do a couple of different things. Usually every so there's an interval, uh, 10 feet or multiples of five generally, uh, that uh, are major contour lines so you can kind of read what these major lines are doing. And then you have these minor contour lines that are actually at the interval, one foot, two foot uh, intervals. In this case, these are all in meters. Now, it's not to say dashed is kind of one convention. The other is to just do a lighter stroke without the dashed lines. And that's equally valid. And sometimes that looks a lot better because it's not as busy. So. Uh, those are the options, but the trick is, is that when we start to place things on top of, uh, like if we're going to start to place our pavilion, for instance, we want to make sure our pavilion is on a new layer, so we create a new layer. And then we can just click, since that's already selected, and just click and drag it up on, put it on this new layer. Yes. Yeah. So if you have something that's selected that's just a part of that layer, it's just going to show whatever is selected on your screen, and then you can move that around. So if you control, if you select everything, if you just come over here and click, it's going to select everything. But if you just select something in the screen itself, it's just that item. And then you can move those things around. So the important thing to think about on these site plans when you're cr starting to create these diagrams and that is that you want to think about line weights and contrast between what it is that you're showing in terms of objects and uh, and the, uh, the the contour lines because you then when you start to use contour lines things can get really busy and so you want to make sure that it's clear that uh, what what is the uh, the important elements okay so like this will be much thicker the outline of whatever kind of object we could also fill this in as a solid. And then if we start to add paths, so let's create uh, a new layer. We'll call that paths. I'm going to go back and rename. Uh, and make sure our new paths are selected. And then we can just start drawing. So one of the things that, another little trick that you can do is, uh, my last trick before I go, is that uh, you can have a stroke and you can kind of think about this as a road width or a path width. And if you go to object and you go to path and then outline stroke, what that, what that will do now is allow us to uh, switch out. So you can see that it switched to being a field object. Now we can switch out and we can actually now have the two outlines of the path. So that's a really handy thing to do streets and
paths and things like that really quickly. And if we do multiples of these things, for instance, I'm going to draw another path. I'm going to make it the same width. that we had before. And select that and then do the same thing. Object, path, outline, stroke. And then flip that. And I haven't done this yet myself, so I'm, this is a test. But I think if we go into that and then we go to our window and Pathfinder, and we do Union, then it takes and creates the intersection. So now we don't have to go in to edit and do these other things. And so that's a really quick way to get paths and to get things uh, kind of set up. Now you'll notice here that we can see the contour lines uh, underneath, and that's fine for most cases. But if you don't want to see the contour lines, uh, just add a white fill, for instance, to that project, to that object, because it's one object now. Okay? So that's some quick and dirty ideas. Um, so what I want you to do is uh, spend the rest of the uh, class period uh, working on these, get this down, and then start to think about how you would uh, create those, those uh, context images. So you know, big scale, see in country where, where this thing is located, do kind of three different scales, build those maps real quickly, then get down into this and uh, start to build this kind of site diagram. And what's great about this is that this image, once you have it, can be a base for lots of different things. So I can start adding layers and uh, artboards and using the same background image to then do wind, do sun analysis, do all kinds of different things on, on pedestrian circulation. I can zoom out and I can start to show those viewpoints where Snowetta is, the mountain, and the glacier versus the others. So this all becomes one thing that, uh, that you can reuse over and over again. And uh, it's really quite helpful. Okay. So a couple of other things that I did is if you go to that Dropbox share yesterday, I put in a bunch of different guides. I also put in some examples of uh, what I consider really good examples of, of the kind of what you guys should be striving to reach in terms of graphic output. Okay. Uh, I also put in uh, last year's, uh, some portfolios from last year's uh, class so that you can kind of see where they started the same as you, and this is, and you can kind of see what, what they developed. Um, one thing that, one of the reasons I'm putting emphasis and I've changed around the class from last year is that I don't think that they were, the diagrams are, and their diagramming skills are, are as good as they could be. So if you look at those examples, um, I don't think that the diagram examples uh, are as strong as they, as they should be. So that's why we're putting an emphasis this year on diagramming to make sure that you guys have that really down and strong, okay? All right, thanks. And uh, Janessa and Farmier is here. Just run around, raise hands, and uh, yeah. Um, you said the project you switched to the 10th? Because yes. on Monday night, so why does it the 10th? Yeah, I put, a new, I put a, new, uh, a new project and a new syllabus that fixed the schedule and did all that other stuff, so, okay. Yep, okay.